Coming down from the hill, you can easily walk from the castle into Malastrana. You could take a bus, but it's just as easy to walk down. It's only a few blocks, and you'll get some friendly greetings. We're walking along on Kampa Island. You get to see this old water wheel. It's a very pleasant park. Now the scene has changed dramatically. Instead of being in the rather dense and built up old medieval town, we're walking through a beautiful green park, Kampa Island, then back to the alleys. Some of these buildings are decrepit, others are palatial. We've walked through this neighborhood to get to this restaurant, Umadri Kochniki. It's an excellent, excellent restaurant. We're here for a late lunch and to just enjoy the setting. The food is traditional Czech cuisine, very elegant, very delicious, with excellent service from a whole fleet of waiters. This is a nice chance for our group to get together for a meal. Very often at lunch or at dinner we're on our own, but sometimes we'll get together and have a special meal like this one. Oh yeah. We had meats and fish, plenty of vegetables, and you'll see some terrific desserts coming up. Good drinks to go along with it. In a spectacular setting, this restaurant is hundreds of years old, and it is beautifully preserved. It has a lot of different artworks on the walls and different memorabilia. Even the furnishings are works of art in themselves. We worked up quite an appetite after that morning tour. Now this is a decadent lunch. Yeah, Normally you good. don't have a lunch like this when you're Looking out good. traveling, but on this special occasion, sure, why not? The meal was a real feast and then we topped it off with a fantastic series of desserts. Baked apples. Hello, hello. No, that's what you ordered. There is a god. There is a god. Oh, where's the camera? Crepes. You really scored. Oh. One way to get back from Alastrana is take the tram. It's a fun way to get around town. We'll show you a couple more tram rides coming up in the program. It's very cheap, very efficient. And after a meal like that, well, we maybe didn't feel like walking so much, but we're still chipper and ready for some more activities this afternoon. The day is not finished by any means. We're gonna take you on some further walks right through the heart of town. You have to punch your ticket when you get on board the tram. Going as a group, one of us punches all the tickets, makes it easier for it that way. If you don't punch the ticket, it's not considered to be a valid ticket, even if you're holding on to what looks like a ticket. So be sure to punch it when you get on the tram. Then you're covered. And the ride costs less than a dollar. Prague also has a very good underground subway system. You see, there are some modern shops in town. For the tourists, uh, all kinds of shopping is available. Souvenirs, knickknacks, as well as modern clothing, if you like. Now let's have a look inside the Mucha Museum. Alphonse Mucha. He was a great Czech artist in the early 20th century. Art Nouveau was his style. And here's a portrait of the artist himself. Throughout Europe at the beginning of the 20th century, you have this style of art, Art Nouveau, also called Jugendstil from Austria. It was very big up in Belgium at the same time. And Mucha was one of the leading practitioners, especially with his great series of posters. The museum has a collection of nearly all of his poster works on display, either in books or hanging on the wall. And there's a short video you can watch at the museum. He was also involved in interior design and graphic design as well. The museum has some other samples of Art Nouveau in Prague. Architectural design, furniture design, and sculpture as well, all part of this modern movement of art that led us into the beginnings of the 20th century.
And then after a visit in the afternoon and further strolls, it's time for another meal. We do a lot of eating on World Traveler. A lovely dinner right in the heart of the old town. Great way to top off the evening, but wait, the night is not done yet. You can go out for a stroll after dark in Prague and it's still very lively. Lots of people out here in the main town square and it's very safe, no problem. A lot of the shops are open still and of course the restaurants and bars and cafes are all open into the evening. You might find a concert to go to or a black light show or some kind of a puppet show. There's a lot of things going on here for evening entertainment or just simply Take a stroll, take a walk for a half an hour, 45 minutes as you head back towards your hotel. Mosey on back to your room maybe and get some sleep. Here's the old Town Hall Tower. Dates back to the 1300s. And if you're really clever, you might catch a concert inside the Estates Theater. That's enough to round out the evening. Next morning, it's up for another scrumptious breakfast at the Palace Hotel. This buffet just won't quit. Bacon and eggs and sausage and potatoes and all sorts of breads. Oh, it's wonderful with this entertainment, a piano player at breakfast in the morning. That's the first time I've ever seen that. Most enjoyable and appreciated. It's funny, when we're at home, most of us just have a simple breakfast, maybe toast and coffee, a slice of papaya. But on the road, you're offered a big buffet, so you dig in and take advantage. Maybe have some cereal, bananas, bacon, eggs, live it up. We're building up some energy for another big day, leaving our Palace Hotel. We take a little stroll just around the corner. We find ourselves in Wenceslas Square. And then we walk a few blocks further over to a tram station. We're going to be taking a trolley again today. See, these trolleys run right in the middle of the streets on steel tracks. It's a very old-fashioned system that you find here and there in Europe. The trolleys are making a comeback lately because they're a very efficient way of getting around. We might have a similar trolley system in our future in Honolulu someday. Maybe not on steel tracks, but on rubber tires and exclusive lanes, something like this trolley that you're looking at now. As we board, we're heading over once again to Malastrana. We were there yesterday, but there's so many interesting things to see in that part of town that we decided to take a morning trip by trolley as a group back over to Malastrana and have a walk through some more of those little alleys. And we're gonna visit a fantastic church, the Church of St. Nicholas, which has a beautiful Baroque interior. So come along, we're in the Malastrana Town Square here. It's a main trolley transit stop. And we hop off and walk through some of these little streets. And then we're going into some of the really quiet neighborhood. This is under the Charles Bridge. Kind of a out of the way neighborhood. The busy foot traffic goes right above it on the Charles Bridge, but most people don't get off the bridge and come down onto the town square, except for a lot of locals. This is definitely a local hangout, and some knowledgeable tourists realize that this makes a rewarding little trip. So you might consider that on your visit to Prague. You'll find this very quiet, peaceful neighborhood just below the Charles Bridge on the Malastrana side of the river. These are the kinds of slightly out of the way things that you can do when you have several days to visit a place. And Prague is certainly worthy of at least two days of your time. And then you can explore and you'll find a place like this beautiful outdoor public garden. There's peacocks and fountains and statues and a pavilion at the end in the evening. They have some outdoor concerts in the pavilion. This is a former palace in the Baroque style. We're at the Wallenstein Gardens. They were built between 1623 and 1629. The pavilion has stucco sculpture and beautiful paintings up on the ceiling, double Doric columns holding it all up. The Wallenstein Palace is the largest palace in all of Prague. 
and there is quite a history behind the Duke of Wallenstein. He was a great military leader. He led the Prague Catholic forces in the Thirty Years' War, the great battle that pitched half of Europe on the Protestant side against the other half of Europe oh, on well, the Catholic different. side, so the and he ended up with that great palace. Nearby in Malastrana are more wonderful buildings to see with sculptures out front and nice little streets that are lined with these old facades. You'll find some antique shops along the way and different kinds of homes and apartments and residences. It's not a strenuous walk. There's a few staircases and up a slight hill, but we're just going a few blocks. So it's easy to get around here in Malastrana. And it's certainly worthwhile for this kind of scenery. And there's the American Embassy. We are in Embassy Row here. Some of the most elegant palaces in town have been taken over as embassies and consulates by the various governments in relation to the Czech Republic. These narrow streets lead downhill and under some very old Gothic arcades. These arcades had been crumbling in recent years, but now they've been renovated and they're doing very nicely.